From the moment the Millennium Falcon blasted away on screen some 40 plus years ago, Star Wars fans have dreamed of piloting the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. These guys are making that dream a reality. Welcome to the Full Scale Falcon Cockpit. My name is Greg Dietrich. I'm the project build lead, I guess you could say, for the Full Scale Falcon Cockpit replica, which you see right, right behind me. We're trying to take the prop from the Star Wars film and bring it into a real life in such a way that people can actually walk around in it, interact with it, be amazed by it. For the past six years, Dietrich Pilati and a group of fellow fans have been building a full-size version of the famous spaceship, part by intergalactic part. Believe it or not, I started the project May 4th. And if you're a fan, you know what May 4th is. Now they have nearly finished the cockpit. We're trying to stay true to what we see on screen. And for me, it's when you walk in for the very first time, you're immediately transported back to the very first time you saw whatever, whatever film it happened to be, whether it was Star Wars, Empire, Jedi, and you were immediately transported back to being a kid and going, wow. We can totally sit in the cockpit now and it, it's great. It's being part of it, even seeing it every day, it's still pretty cool. We are sitting in the actual cockpit that, uh, that, that we've built. This is the first time that two people have actually sat here. First time in two, two and a half years that the console has, at, has been in place. The seats have been in place. Feels pretty good, actually. What we're looking at is the, uh, is the actual, I, I guess, flight console where on screen the, the ship has actually flown. What each one of these buttons does, I have no idea. What we know for sure is that in order to go into... Light speed, not warp speed. Light speed, you pull these four down and you go into light speed. And it's not just the hyperdrive levers. There's a radar unit to spot Imperial Star Destroyers and hatches that open and close. Today, Dietrich is putting final touches on a set of pads that ring the cockpit entrance. But we do that, then one goes here, one goes here, here, all the way around. 19 total, going all the way around. I actually gouged out this deep cut right right, right here. I just basically took a knife and I went like this to the actual insulation foam. And then when I covered with a shop towel Mod Podge, I kind of tucked it in there. And once the paint was on and the black wash was put on, you can see what a dirty look. So you go from that to that in a matter of minutes. And each pad has to be done by hand, one at a time. But what, what I really enjoy about it is that each pad has its own character, has its own life, has its own story to tell, um, which is a lot of fun. And that's what, 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 what makes the project fun. To make it as realistic and as interactive as possible, Pilati has rigged the craft with sound and lights. Lots of lights. I've lost count, to be honest. Um, I'd have to say probably over 500 lights. Some blink, some turn on and off with a satisfying click. The lights are part of the full-scale Falcon team's devotion to the fine art of something that set builders call greeblies. All of the details that you see, whether it's these trays here or this piece that I call the laser gun uh, or the cockpit laser gun, uh, this, this greebly set right here that's exactly what that's called we don't know what it is so we call it a greebly one of my favorite greeblies in the whole in the whole cockpit is, is this guy right here this this particular greebly has has been redesigned redone i think five or six times but it, it's one of my favorites because we finally identified what it actually is and it's an autopilot clutch out of a fighter it, it just sits it just sits there and it's just, it's, it's one of my absolute favorite, uh, favorite pieces. You'd be forgiven if you thought they were building this in a galaxy far, far away, but the full-scale Falcon is being constructed in a garage here. We are located in Huntsville, Alabama, which is the space and, cap space and rocket capital of the world. Just right down the road from us is the uh, Space and Rocket Center. If you were to ever come into town, you'd see the very, very large Saturn V rocket. Werner von Braun was here, and he's really what helped the U.S. start their space program. I can't think of a better place for the Falcon to be uh, the city than the space and rocket capital of the world. 
But Dietrich and Pilati do get assistance with schematics and greeblies from volunteer fans from around the world. The project has taken on a life of its own. It started with just me uh, in my garage. Once it began to take off, once people were like, hey, this, this, this guy's serious, all of a sudden, people from not only around here, but people from Seattle, Baltimore, Dallas, England, all wanted to get involved. Which is good, because Dietrich, who works as a graphic designer, and Pilati, who also has a day job, can only do so much in their free time. This isn't a full-time job. I got a full-time job in an office where I sit all day long. When I get the opportunity, I come here, and I build, and I have fun. No detail is too small, and that can be a problem because the Millennium Falcon is constantly changing. The actors during the shoots might knock off a part. So they might glue it on, they might glue it on wrong, they might not glue it on at all, and so they might put on another part. It's so every scene changes, and so it's hard to kind of say, this is the definitive Falcon because it always changes. It originally started as the a New Hope cockpit, and then we said, let's go for the Empire version, that's the fan favorite. We're trying to be as screen accurate as we can get. I got a really good feeling about Of course, that. with the new movies, including the new Solo, there are always new Millennium Falcon details to study. The first time I watch a new Star Wars movie, I just let it be Star Wars. Like, I just, I just let it hit. I, let, I, I, wanna, I want that first viewing to be just the fun viewing. Then after that, once I've, gotten my, once I've gotten my Star Wars experience, then I'll sit down and go, okay, what's, what's different? These guys know a lot about the Millennium Falcon, from movie quotes. She'll make .5 past light speed. Do the Kelsey run in uh, under 12 parsecs. She might not look like much, but she's got to wear it counts. To details on the original parts used to build the first set. Take the neat chairs behind the pilot seats. They were originally made from Martin Baker Mark IV ejection seats found in early jets. No, they're not, not cheap at all. The Martin Baker chair itself, between fifteen dollars to $25,000. It's more cost effective to just build one. This is not an actual ejection seat. This is a replica, mostly wood, uh, which I built. Um, it has removable pads on it. Um, you've got, uh, you've got uh, 3D printed parts, 3D printed parts here. This is just a mock-up of the, of the headpiece. But the most famous part of the chair, believe it or not, is the actual Tupperware lid that sits dead center of where the person's head rests. That's a Tupperware lid. That is an actual Tupperware lid. That level of detail is what makes the build so unique. Parts that can't be found are made by hand, by 3D printer, and with a laser cutter. The cockpit is made out of mostly three-quarter inch plywood. That's for all of the framing. The panels are made from MDF, which is multi-density fiberboard. The greeblies and, and the details you see are mostly acrylic, MDF, or 3D printed. I would say the cockpit weighs probably 1,000 pounds, maybe? 1,500? I, I, to be honest with you, I, re I really don't know. I don't want it falling on me, but I, re I really don't know how, how much it weighs. How much longer do I think I have on it? Six months, maybe a year, maybe two, I don't know. And believe it or not, the cockpit is just the beginning. The ultimate goal is to build the, the entire ship. The actual full-scale ship is 80 feet wide, 114 feet long, and 30 feet tall at the top of the radar. So it's not small. That's just three little things that are holding us back. Time, space, and money. How much money have I spent? I really don't want to say because <laughs> probably between thirty to sixty thousand dollars, I would say, and, and and a lot of that is just doing something over and over again, realizing that oh we got the part wrong, I have to take it off, and I have to you know, order something because I have to re 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 redo the part. So why do we want to build something like this? I, I don't know, maybe to capture that same feeling that we had when we were eight years old, when we were 10 years old, we were 12 years old. It, it takes us away from this, from reality, and takes us to a time where we didn't have to worry about bills. We didn't have to worry about the politicians. We didn't have to worry, we weren't bombarded. This takes all of that away. And, and, and maybe that's what it is. In the real world, if you could 
if you could just pull the four levers, levers back and get out of here, I think, I think we would do it. Ha, ha, ha.